we have a lot to talk about, so we need to recount from the beginning. You guys want to hear what I did while I was away? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, okay? So, as you all know, heading on over to Baltimore and D.C. for VidCon and for some cool political shenanigans, the day before I was due to go, I developed a sore throat, and I thought, there's no way. Three years of no COVID, and I catch it right now, having not gone outside recently. Like, what, like what, what would it be from, you know? But I tested, and I was negative, so, you know, whatever. And I fly in out there, and I hate flying, but I make it, you know? And I feel, over the course of my time there, persistently worse. Now, I'm consistently testing. Over and over again, I'm testing. And I think, you know, at first I thought it was just allergies, because... I tend to get allergies around this time of year anyway, and it might have been a cold. I mean, I don't know, but I kept testing, and it was never COVID, so that's what I care about, right? Like, I'm not going to forgo this based on a cold. So anyway, I go on over there, and um, the first day when I arrive, it's like 9 or 10 p.m., and it's, uh, you know, too late to do anything. So the next day, it's it's socializing. That um, That photo, let me see if I can look it up. The photo of myself, Steve, and Kef next to each other is from the day after I arrived. Where's that photo? Okay, the bottom half of this photo is what I'm referring to. There we go. Now, Keffels did end up getting COVID, and I didn't. So, Kovals caught... Uh, Koval, Kovals? Kovals over here. Keffels caught a stray. Oh, look, I'm wearing the same shirt. Same shirt. Kovals over here. But again, I kept testing. At one point, I thought I might have tested positive because, you know, for those rapid tests, like, you know, at home strips, it's like if you see the two lines, that means you're positive. But sometimes you, it's like a trick of the light. And you don't know if you see the other line. So it's like, is that real? They test like, I don't know, the acidity in your nostrils. I, I don't know the exact way the test works, but they say if there's any two lines, like, yeah, like being pregnant, like being COVID pregnant. That means you're positive. So anyway, when I thought that it might have been two lines, I went and got an actual test, like at a doctor's, and still negative. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do, folks? Anyway, the, the first night was that. I got a girlfriend while you're on hiatus. This clearly indicates good things happen to me when you don't stream. Then better get away from here. What are you doing right now? What if all of them were false negatives? Well, then that would be, at this point, six false negatives, which, you know, if, if at that level of care, the universe is still denying me a clear indication of virality, then I just don't know. You know, that's the, that's the best that I can do. Yeah, I'm immune, it would so seem. Anyway, we went and we got, uh, we got food. We were told to look mean at the camera for this, by the way. So I was trying to do like a blue steel, but I don't know how to do faces unless I can see myself in an OBS preview window. So I just end up looking like mean. But then all of us look goofy, so it doesn't really matter. Anyway, the next day I, I met with the PV people. I met with the PV people. We were going to get dinner afterwards, but I didn't do that because that was when I was worried. I was positive for COVID, so I went over to a, a doctor and got a test. We didn't do that. And then the next day was, was the Rokana stuff. How cool is that, huh? Shook hands with a, with a, a, a congressman. You know... I know that at some point he must have been like briefed or prepped on something relating to the interaction that we were going to have because when I took a photo with him and with Destiny, he looked at both of us and he was like, I thought you two hated each other. <laughs> and being told that by a congressman is incredibly funny, you know? It's just a level of sort of um, social uh, crossover that I'm just not, you know, you, you don't expect it. You don't expect it to happen. Very, very funny. Anyway, uh, yeah, you know, so what, what matters most is that I got to look good in my, in my cool coat. As everyone may know, you know, I keep looking at Twitter and I'm thinking like, oh, did people enjoy the convo? And it's just bottoms thirsting after my coat. That's like the entire, like, that's the whole thing that I'm looking at. Like, I, I, they, I, I just, I open my phone and it's just that. And I don't get any feedback on anything else. Here's some agua. Classic. Brown Wu brought over a footstool specifically for me to put my water bottle on because I love agua so much. My agua table. How did you hold it in when Emma forgot his name? Okay, 
I could be totally off on this because I saw people were saying that Emma like made up forgetting Destiny's name, but I could be totally off. When I first saw Emma, like right before we did the interview, we talked about everyone there and, you know, it was like, oh, she was brown, well, you're Destiny, you know, and she was like, I thought he had blue hair. And I was like, I know he had blue hair. And I think I th because at the end she was going to say Steven and not Destiny. And I think she got the name confused like she she associated one of those names with blue hair and not the other so she switched one so so she said destiny but forgot the steven but earlier she said like oh yeah i don't i don't i don't like follow this space that much i didn't even watch you until a little recently so you know i don't really know it was funny either way so it doesn't really matter yeah she was expecting like a blue hair sgw girl she was expecting destiny to be like that big holographic girl from uh, the blade runner reboot the big the big one that everyone makes the memes of very disappointed to see that wasn't the case, actually. No, no, no. She knew Destiny, but it was she was trying to say Steven at the whatever, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I thought it was funny. So what matters is that it was funny. I thought she said Steven. Am I misremembering? Was it the other way around? It it doesn't matter. Anyway, Agua. Okay. So I enjoyed the conversation with Rokana, obviously, up in my channel. I thought that was pretty good. Emma is a great interviewer. I'm not a great interviewer. I don't like interviewing. I'm not a big fan of it. I like talking. I like debating and talking. I don't like interviewing. So Emma did the interviewing and I did the rambling. And I love rambling. So I'm fine with that. I love ameliorating. Thank you. Yeah, I thought there was a good rapport there. And then we had the, um, uh, we had us and Destiny and Ryan Grimm. Initially, this wasn't going to happen. What happened was during all of this, the backdrop, I mean, there's the White House. The backdrop of all of this is that the votes and all of the drama about the government shutdown were happening, so Ro Khanna had to run back to the Capitol building to cast his vote for that. And it was actually really cool, like, taking the time of a congressman during this gigantic national spectacle, you know, like, I really appreciated Ro Khanna, like, taking the time to do this, especially considering how, um, how, like, serious the situation was down there, you know? Hope he didn't mash a fire alarm in the way there. Yeah, yeah, he's like sprinting back and like opening up every door in the way. So that was pretty cool. Anyway, we initially weren't going to be the four of us talking, but because Rokana had to leave for a little bit to to fill time, we had us for talk, and then Rokana spoke with Brian Grimm and Destiny, and then Cenk came. Man, he he did not look happy to see me. I I barely had any time to talk to him because of course he showed up. He, he's a busy guy. I don't fault him for that. But um, I did speak to him. I did speak to him briefly, and for somebody who is so boisterous and friendly seeming online like in his videos and stuff i just contrasting that against the way he behaved in person i really don't think he was happy to see me so whatever like i'm not i'm not here to fight uh, or anything i wasn't here to argue with him or destiny or anyone else you know i i, I think that he um feels quite negatively about my uh, interactions with uh, with anna kasparian which i do not regret at all but it was it was just funny i guess to see him like kind of stiff you know hassan is also really quiet in person okay I swear to God, Destiny's gotten more aut uh, autistic since the last time I saw him. He was on his Switch the entire time. Uh, during all the me I think all the meals that we went to, and also during the panel at the at, at VidCon, he was on his Switch. He was playing like a triangle game. I heard somebody ask him. I, I didn't. I don't know the name. It's a triangle game. I don't know. Whatever kind of game Destiny likes. It must be like Factorio or something. I don't know. But he was on his Switch the entire time. I kind of respect it, to be honest. I, you know, I um, I kind of respect that commitment to the bit. He's literally us. Yeah, you know, he's that's the actual like proletarian live streamer. You see me and I'm wearing like nice clothes and I'm like boisterous and socializing with people. And he's in the corner on a switch and you're like, that's me. You know, that's one of us. Yeah, it's a good move. It, 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 it signals a lot of unity. Wait, I thought the switch thing was a Photoshop. No, no. Yeah, I'm sorry to the friendship believers, but uh, I think all of the social interactions between him and I were from me. I sat over across from him at the table on the first night that we got food together. And in every successive interaction, I think it was me just being near him or saying hi. There's something, something just sort of circumstantial or, or me oriented. He was switch pilled, man. I don't know. That's, that's crazy. Genuinely. He's probably a lot more used to doing in-person stuff, though. It's all routine to him. Did you try talking to him at all? Well, I, I sat across from him at that one meal. But generally, no. For one, he wasn't really radiating that energy. For two, I don't like him. Uh, you know, I'm always happy to be civil in person. And the whole point of the event was like civility and getting along and blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not going to like go out of my way or, or whatever. Oh, he did pay for the 
second dinner we had, which could not have been cheap. So that was nice of him. The subreddit was shipping you guys. You have to love him now. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I see, of course. It's impossible not to. The uh, uh, persistent shipping. What is even the source of the beef between you guys at this point? Yeah, this is this is the problem with me. And I guess like, I guess the, the problem is that like his, com no, not his community. His subreddit is basically like Kiwi Farms, I think, to the extent that like, if you bring someone up there, it's like, oh, that person? You mean the person who? And then they have like the manifesto pre-saved to their clipboard, you know, like all of them simultaneously every time, like all the time ready. They're at like the 7-Eleven checkout and they're like, can I pay you in this? And they t like type it. Yeah, like it's so I, I think like they have a very good memory for this. I would have to like invest more energy than I care to to remember every problem I have with them, though. I, I mean, it's a long list. You know, it would it would take some time to draft, but it doesn't really matter. You know, that's the uh, that's like the energy black hole that I've warned about where it's like debate is good and all. But there is like a, a, a vortex kind of where if you overcommit to certain elements of the persistent like online, like ultra online, like here's how everyone has wronged me, this, that, the other, uh, it basically turns into like your whole life. I have trouble remembering why I'm angry with people who have only done a couple of things wrong. So I, I just don't care to. It just, it doesn't, it, it's not usually like material, you know? I think it's, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess the extent to which people are willing to let that rule their lives is like very much um, a, a personal decision. But I went there completely uninterested in arguing. So there's no, like, I don't, you let him pay is he richer than you? Destiny is definitely richer than I am. Yeah, I have to assume so. Yeah, probably. So anyway, we did the thing with Rokana, and that was a lot of fun. We got food after, and I got to walk around DC, and guys, guys, DC is amazing. For those of you who are smug about it, you know, you can, you can enjoy your moment. DC is incredibly nice. It's, it's unbelievably nice to walk around. The, the cool thing about, like, hold on, DC is basically built in, like, the ultra-urbanist dream fashion that I rant and rave about. I've been to DC before, but only very briefly. Like, if you, go, if you go and look at the residential areas for D.C., they all look like this, which is gorgeous and beautiful and unimpeachable and perfect in every way. Like, seriously, look at that. And because there's a height limit on the buildings in D.C., there has to be for uh, security reasons, because you're next to the White House. So all the buildings around have um, very strict height restrictions. If you, if you fly a kite in D.C., it gets immediately perforated by a sniper team from the uh, Secret Service. So as a consequence of that, basically all of DC is built like this, and it feels like a European city where you have like really big pavilions that stretch between like maybe eight to 10 story blocks that are like super beautifully built out. And they've got like a, like a functioning subway system and it's just, yeah, it's uh, it's really nice. So I walked around for a while. I, 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 I could tell like, I was so happy to be walking around because like it was um, so busy. Like, the whole area around the White House, like, anything within, like, two dozen blocks or whatever. It was so big. People were, like, walking around everywhere, you know? It, 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 and continued to as the day got later as well. There were so many shops and blah de blah Just really nice. Just really, really beautiful. I don't think you'll find that big of roads. Well, they have to make the roads big here for a couple of reasons. One of which also being, like, security, you know? A lot... It's, it's kind of weird to think that, like, a lot of the good urban planning in DC is kind of built around the security requirements of being the capital. Does that make any sense? Like, it's it's just weird to think of like, oh, why do we have like these big broad pavilions and beautifully proportioned buildings next to the roads? And why do we have this zoning and all this mixed use and stuff? It's like, oh, well, because they don't want snipers to be able to look in through White House windows. It's like, oh, okay, sure. Yeah, you know, I mean, however you get there, I guess. However, whatever leads you there. So I walked around for a while and I had a good time. I had that very fun sort of persistent travel experience of, of dealing with the like lingering anxiety of a low phone battery because I wasn't taking the subway. I had a lot of driving around to do. So I just got a rental and I was driving between Baltimore and DC. And that meant that I, um, I stayed in between the two cities and I was just driving around a lot because I had stuff that I needed to move around. I couldn't just take the subway everywhere. Traffic gets really bad there, which is why you should take the subway if you can. And I need the phone to like navigate because Streets in that area are psychotic. There may be worse car culture on the West Coast than on the East Coast, but our roads are better, too, is the thing. There were so many, like, unannounced merges, it was actually psychotic. Driving 
over near DC made me so anxious. Because if you, again, again, the car dependency on the West Coast is a lot worse. But if you are driving, there's a lot of very consistent signage. Whereas in, in DC, multiple times, it was just like, oh yeah, I guess fucking like Paul Revere designed this road or whatever. So if you want to like merge, it's like, oh, no warning. Just like, haha, hope there's not a car to your left dipshit. Okay. You're either colliding with this stop sign or you're, you're, you know, like it's, it's pretty bad. It's, uh, uh, there were a couple of times that there were unannounced merges on the highway or maybe by unannounced. What I mean, is like a hundred feet. So you're on a you're on a lane. It's dark. There's barely any lighting. It's like 8 p.m. or whatever, and then you just see like the white line that separates you from the lane to your left disappear. Now it's just one wide lane, and it's tapering. And you're like, what? 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 And I'm like, <laughs> ah, yep, there it is. For non-Americans, that is a scheduled test of our emergency um, broadcast system. It's been known for a while. Anyway, that alert was what was going off in my brain while I was forced suddenly to merge with uh, the <laughs> with the lane to my left. Yeah, that's what happened in my head. It was very unnerving. I didn't like that. Have you been to many cities or large towns in the East Coast? Baltimore, D.C., Florida doesn't really count. I don't really fucking know. Uh, does does Nashville count? No, not really. But look, whatever. Anyway, I had a good time. Right, we got dinner, and then the last day there was the VidCon panel, and that was nice. Oh. And, and, by the way, so I saw a ton of fans at the VidCon panel. I stayed for an hour after the panel to um, shake hands and take pictures with everyone. And, uh, and, and everything was great. And also, I believe they're in chat right now, individual by the name of Scooter, not their actual name. That's their chat name, made this. Look at how cute this is. Get, get that hair out of your, get that hair out of your eyes, you, you, you goddamn slob. There we go. Look, it's crocheting. Ain't it cute? Look, it's even got my glasses. They're octagonal. It's so cute. It's so cute. I love it. I protected it the whole way home. Literally vonk. Why is it? Because it's fussy. I'll do the hair, you know? I'll take care of the hair. I take care of my hair. But your hair is brown. My hair is spiritually red, okay? Don't, don't worry about it. Is Emma as awesome as she seems? Emma is very nice, yeah. And after the VidCon panel, we got dinner, and that was the last dinner. And it was fun. How'd you feel about Destiny trying to instigate shit at the VidCon panel? Yeah, I did think it was pretty funny that it was ostensibly a panel about Unity, and he took like four or five opportunities to start arguing how leftists are bad because they can't do Unity, while he said arguing with the leftists on the... <laughs> you know, I feel like it's like an influence thing, I guess. I don't know if it was like he was fine to begin with, and then like he interacts with me fo like positively with the Rokana thing, and then he checks his sub... And the sub is full of like, how could you let him get away with the 78 trillion things he's done wrong? You, 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 and then like the next time it's like, oh, well, I have to be more aggressive or antagonistic or whatever. That's why I don't listen to you guys. Okay. I saw the entire time that I was in um, DC and Baltimore and shit, there were people, and I don't, I didn't even know what it was about saying like, Hey, you know, thing about destiny, you know, thing about Brianna Wu. And, and I've only like barely caught up now with some of that drama or whatever, but I tend to be pretty good about not listening to you people. I don't really know how much of it is like hate born in heart or like an influence thing or whatever. But yeah, he was, um, it was being so antagonistic during the VidCon panel. And again, it leads him to say really stupid shit. Like when I was pointing out that there's a lot more artificial unity on the right, because a lot of them tend to get financial backing from like a centralized source. And he was like, ah, well, leftists make money from their donos. I was like, what the f does that have to do with what I said? Like he wanted to fight back against the idea that the left was like plucky and had no money or something, even though that wasn't the point being made stupid asinine low iq beneath him but that's what being angry does to you maybe he was trying to point out ways that left us hurt attempts to unity as things to avoid oh sure and i don't disagree with any of that i mean people who watch my content you know am i like averse to pointing out problems with the left with regards to unity no god no. <laughs> i talk about this all the time it's valid and worth talking about of course it's one of those like proportional engagement things right where you you have to like try to strike a fine line with the whole we can't do unity because the left is x and then like actually doing unity right i think a good example from my perspective or like where i try to draw a line or draw a line would be i think that um people like sean asshole contra wronged me whatever um but still watch their videos great videos and learn a lot from that you know i try to it's always like getting along with me is not like the dividing line 
between political expediency and nihilistic do-nothing leftism. It's often an indicator, like, you know, there's a, there's a correlative element, I don't deny that, but it's not like the line, right? So, you know, if you can acknowledge that, I think you can build bridges, or at least encourage your audience to build bridges. That's the whole point of progressive victory, right? Destiny and I are never going to get along. At least, I have no idea what would have to happen to make that possible. So, that one's off the table. But the audiences, every fan of Destiny, every person who it's called an orbiter of his, whatever that I met while I was over there, super nice. Talk with all them people. And all the fans, yeah, I'd say hi, shake hands. Everyone, great, you know? I, I hear from my fans, they go and they canvas, they meet Destiny fans, Destiny fans meet my fans. Do they get along? Yes, yes, really, yes, they do. Because in reality, you know, it's this is like a parasocial thing, right? You can't extrapolate these. It doesn't, like, transfer over to every single person. So the broader project of getting along well enough to at least get the audiences to, to, to do something productive, very much in line, very much intact. So that's nice, you know? I heard there was supposed to be an event at the White House that got canceled. Also heard that Hassan was somehow involved. Oh man, I'm like actually angry about this one, okay? There were, I, I did get to meet with some White House staffers uh, outside of the White House, and that was pretty fun. But there was a White House event that was planned where we were going to go and get an influencer tour and meet with staffers in the White House. And apparently, I don't know this for sure, but apparently one of the people who was supposed to be there was Hassan. And the whole thing got canceled because it was thrown into suspicion when Hassan's recent comments on letting China take Taiwan made their way up the chain. Like, the whole thing was planned, and then Hassan's treasonous horseshit ended up getting, like, elevated to a point where it was like, whoa, 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 hold on. Like, we can't, you know, we, we, we have to be, like, way more scrutinous now. And then, you know, obviously nobody, Hassan Destiny myself, nobody is passing a PR background check, right? Like, if we're getting in there on that event, it's because nobody looked into it too closely, right? It's because we got security checks, not PR checks. So now everyone gets a PR check. And wouldn't you know it, Keffels did 9-11, Hassan did 9-11, I did 9-11, Destiny did 9-11. So, like, yeah, ac actually mad about that, by the way. Emma probably would have passed a PR background check, but by that point, the whole event was kind of tanked. Anyway, yeah, I don't know that for sure, but I'm fairly confident that's what happened, and I'm pretty annoyed. Yeah, we weren't given PR background checks. That's the thing. Not everyone who enters the White House is given a PR background check. There are people who enter the White House without PR background checks all the time, but his comments were notorious enough and got loud enough that it ended up spurring this like, whoa, 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 we can't do this, we need to check sort of thing. You know? Anyway, I'm mad about that. There's no way Hassan would have gone anyways if D-Man was there. Maybe not. He's getting it, getting it canned for like a thing he wouldn't have even attended. So yeah, we, we did the dinner after VidCon. I got this gorgeous Vosh. I went to Baltimore for the dinner that night and it was beautiful. The, the port, I don't know what the technical term is, but like the portion of Baltimore that's next to the, um, that's next to the big boat that you have in the water. I don't, I don't know what the boat is called. In the harbor? It's like the boat. It's like the old timey boat. The inner harbor area? The, the inner harbor area is really pretty. People complain about Baltimore a lot, but like, holy shit, dude. Again, you guys need to visit the West Coast. You have no idea how bad it gets. To be fair, as I understand it, and I have been to Baltimore like in the regular parts of it as well, Baltimore has serious issues with crime and redlining and shit like that. But holy shit, it's so beautiful, you know? It's so, so, so pretty. Yeah, this this area right here, I think. So pretty. Is that the right one? I don't know. It looks good. Anyway, we went to a, we went to a restaurant around there. Doesn't Contra live in Baltimore? Yes, Contra was actually at uh, VidCon, though I didn't attend early enough to see her. Even, even if I had, I wouldn't have. My presence there would have been interpreted as an implicit threat, so I don't intend on uh, worsening things uh, or, or being an asshole in that respect. You know, Back during the Gamergate days, one of the ways that Sargon and people like him would threaten or intimidate like feminist YouTubers, was they would show up to conferences where they were speaking and show up in like the front row and just like be there because it's like a we've got our eyes on you thing. Now, I would never do that, but keep in mind that to people who dislike me, I am like that. So, uh, you know, I, like it's not even like an implication I want to have to argue against basically. Right, so anyway, that part of Baltimore was really nice. 
and uh, walked around, had a great time, then I headed back. And then my flight back, I had to drop the rental car off at like 6.30 a.m. Oh my God, man, holy, I got no sleep on the drive back. Absolutely no sleep. It was, uh, <laughs> oh God. But I got, I got back home at like noon, so that's nice. Didn't you get a hubcap stolen from the car? Okay, I was missing a hubcap when they did the rental car turn-in inspection, and people in chat wisely pointed out that if it's just one hubcap missing, it probably just fell off. And I'm really sorry for my like Beverly Hills privilege, or whatever. I have never heard of a hubcap like falling off. I've never driven a car or heard of a car being driven where a hubcap fell off. I don't know if this is a class distinction thing. I don't know if this is just circumstance where I hadn't heard of it or whatever. I've, just, I've never heard of that. They are usually secured very, very firmly, but I guess it's possible. So I don't know. And I guess it doesn't make sense that one would steal one hubcap as opposed to four. Also, they weren't good hubcaps. I don't know why you would steal them. Usually means it wasn't secured the best. I did not get a good rental car. <laughs> I did not. The rental car that I got was not the best car I could have gotten, you know? Made it back home. Still negative for COVID. So how cool is that, huh? Got to meet Rokana. Got to get this. Keep in mind, by the way, we have a lot of work to do with progressive victory. You know, the 2024 election is coming up. It'll be the first time that we have dipped our toes into a presidential. We, 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 we got a lot to do, okay? You'll be hearing plenty plenty about them. Virginia legislative races in a few weeks too. Yeah, there's, yeah, the 2023 elections too. Though I don't know how much progressive victory is going to be involved in those. Maybe they are. I need to check. what did you know of Rokana before the interview? How do you stack up to your expectations? Well, I mean, I, I knew that he was a, a generally progressive representative and he was quite nice and friendly in person. I enjoyed talking with him. Obviously, all politicians are going to be pretty like professional and stilted when you talk to them like you're not getting that much personality in most cases because they have to be incredibly careful about what they say so you know i, I went to my expectations with regards to that but he was friendly you know it's nice what do you think of how he handled the question about socialism well he's not a socialist you know the the key here is about like making the democratic party a viable vessel for left-wing progressive activism especially stuff that'll capture like the youth and that's really tough to do when the Dems are like talking about how socialism is a great evil or whatever, especially when Bernie Sanders did so well in 2016 and 2020. Like it's really weird for him to have done so well and activated so many voters. And then for Democrats to go like, ah, yes, well, you know, sure. But socialism is a great evil. Like that, 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 that like, you know, congressional declaration was passed, but it was also kind of a bad faith question to begin with. So yeah, you gave Ro Khan a free platform. And yeah, I can't believe I platformed an anti-socialist devastating all right all right 